Okay, that was so much better than I literally have goosebumps. <laughs> Holy shit, this is gonna work. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm constantly in new setups. For the past three years, I've been traveling full time as a digital nomad. Something I've always struggled with and it hasn't gotten any better over time is sleep whenever I enter a new environment. I can't really tell you what it is. Adrenaline from the flight, at times maybe a jet lag or anxiousness of the new environment. The first nights of sleep are always awful. I'm actually quite a sleep conscious person, at least since reading Matthew Walker's Why We Sleep a few years ago. So if you're not sleeping, the, one of the first things that you become deficient in is your capacity to learn. The shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. Short sleep predicts all-cause mortality. While this might be more fear-inducing than it needs to be, he has a point. And I do feel not just physically bad, but also drained of any emotion, motivation and inspiration without a good night of sleep. Which is not a great start when you enter a new country. However, recently I may have found a solution. Listen to this. If you have an idea you're excited about and you don't bring it to life, it's not uncommon for that idea to find its voice through another maker. There's a time for certain ideas to arrive and they find a way to express themselves through us. This is Rick Rubin, who has the most soothing voice I've ever heard. I listened to his audiobook twice and fell asleep more than twice. However, I obviously don't want to listen to the same contents over and over again. So here's my idea. Use this audiobook as training data to create an AI voice model that sounds exactly like him. My AI model should be able to read me whole books and of course, I'm trying to beat my sleep score once I'm in a new country. Speaking of that, I'm flying from Germany to Peru the day after tomorrow, so I better get going. Before getting started, here's a quick disclaimer. I don't own any rights to Rick Rubin's voice. In the extremely unlikely case that he sees this, I just want to say I'm a huge fan. I will not share the voice model anywhere and the whole video is just meant for entertaining and educational purposes. Doing these videos is my kind of art in the precise way you define art yourself. There are no right answers for anything involved in art. It's We're, we're all trying experiments to find a way. Do what you love and to make things that you love, whatever it is, make, make your favorite things. Please keep inspiring us. At the outset of the project, I already knew a few different tools and techniques for this kind of voice cloning. However, since the field of AI is moving stupidly fast, I started like I always do, with research. I'm just done with my research phase, I guess, and I think there are two different ways to go about this. One is running something locally for free or in a Google Colab. Retrieval-based voice conversion still seems to be the state-of-the-art solution here. The other option is to use services that take away all the tricky parts, but cost you some money. Eleven Labs is the market leader here for sure. I've never used it before, but was excited to finally give it a shot. I'm gonna try both of them, compare the two and see which one works better. The retrieval-based voice conversion collab looks daunting at first. There's a bunch of code and the descriptions are in Chinese but it's actually really simple to use. After auto-translating the notebook to English, you just gotta press play on some of these code blocks, upload your audio file that you want to train with, launch the web UI and press three buttons. That's it, we're already training. I found a six minute excerpt of Rick Rubin's audiobook on the publisher's YouTube channel that I used for training the model. All right, so the first model has just finished training. Let's listen to Rick Rubin reading Animal Farm. Hold up, I still need to explain how to use the trained model. Instead of feeding a text, you give it another audio file. So I used a short clip from an Animal Farm audiobook, which sounds like this. Chapter four. By the late summer, the news of what had happened on Animal Farm had spread across half the country. Now here is the Rick Rubin version. I'm, I'm excited for this, let's see. Chapter four. By the late summer, the news of what had happened on Animal Farm had spread across half the country. I think it's not it's not super bad, but it's also not really that good. I mean, you can I think you can clearly hear that it is Rick Rubin or that I'm trying to imitate Rick Rubin here, but it also still has this very robotic kind of sound. It still very much sounds AI generated, and I don't think it's something I would like to fall asleep to. So, I think we're going to continue here and try something better. After doing some further research, I realized that six minutes might be too little data. 
Most sources suggested about 30 minutes. They also recommended cutting down the audio file into a lot of really short 5 second segments. I don't really know why, since the code already does some kind of separating itself, but hey, maybe we can do better. As always, ChatGPT assisted me in writing a short program that takes 30 minutes from the audiobook and segments them into these 5 second files. And so the training started anew, this time taking a lot longer though. Second day and also the second training run, let's see how we're doing. Chapter 4 By the late summer the news of what had happened on Animal Farm had spread across half the country. Every day Snowball and Napoleon sent worse? out flights of pigeons. I think that sounded worse, honestly. I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to the first one again, but but I think that's that was worse than what we had before. Yeah, it really was worse. Maybe the segmentation was off, maybe it was an overfitting problem, maybe it were too many or too little epochs of training, it's hard to know. I did another run with different parameters, but there wasn't any success. This wasn't it. I was not gonna fall asleep to this robotic voice. I bumped into a limit, so it was time to check out the other options. 11 Labs is clearly made for the end user. After creating an account, you get different options to train a new voice. They even got a professional voice cloning option, which takes up to four weeks, and they claim that it is completely unrecognizable from your real voice. They know the dangers of this, so if you choose this option, you will have to prove to them that it's your voice. Something I obviously can't do in the Rick Rubin case, but I will probably try out this feature with my own voice at some point. Anyway, I went with the instant voice cloning option and uploaded 30 minutes of audio again, this time segmented into 3 minute chunks. I didn't use the labeling option to refine the model, but added a deep, wise, soothing and calming American voice as a prompt. The training was done in a matter of minutes. Afterwards, you can input your text and use these sliders to tweak the voice to your liking. Now it's time for 11 laps. Show me what you got. Chapter 4 By the late summer, the news of what had happened on Animal Farm had spread across half the country. Every day, Snowball Napoleon sent out flights of pigeons, whose instructions were to mingle with the animals on neighboring farms. That's actually really good. And teach them the tune of Beasts of England. Most of this time, how? Mr. Jones had spent sitting in the tap room of the Red Lion at Willingdon complaining to anyone who would listen to the monstrous injustice he had okay. suffered. Okay, okay. That was so much better than... I, I literally have goosebumps. <laughs> that was so much better than I, saw, than I thought and so, so much better than the other experiments we made. Holy shit, this is gonna work. The voice sounded amazing, but it came with its own challenge. You can only enter up to 2,500 characters as a free user and up to 5,000 characters as a paid user. 5,000 characters is about 1,000 words, which would be about 5 to 8 minutes of audio. That's a little short for an audiobook. On top of that, the quality is known to degrade on longer text. The sweet spot is probably around just 1,000 characters. Luckily, 11 Labs offers an API, so you're not restricted to their website, but can also use their service programmatically, which is what I did. I think I'm done, it's working. I wrote a short program that does a lot of magic. First, it loads in a text file. This can be whatever you want and however long you want it to be. I can paste articles or a whole book in here. The file then gets split into smaller pieces with a maximum of 1000 characters each. I also made sure that the splitting happens at the end of sentences to guarantee a better flow. Now that we have these short segments, we can send them to 11 labs and get back an mp3 file for each one. Well, there it is, there it is, there it is. It took a while, but there is our first mp3 file, the first output file. In the end, the last part of the program just stitches all the mp3s together into one final file. That's our audiobook. All that was left to do was to pick a book, run the program and take the flight to Lima, Peru. There's one little caveat. I picked up the creator plan for $22 per month, which gives me 100,000 characters in addition to the 10,000 free characters per month. That's about two hours of audio per month. Not a lot, but I think we can work with that. All right, so I arrived in Lima in my apartment about two hours ago. It's now 
6.30 p.m. so it's not really that late but coming from Germany it is late for me because I have like the time difference and I'm gonna show you my sleep situation right now. This is my bed, not too bad, no pun intended. These are not blackout curtains however and there's quite the noisy street outside. I mean of course we're in a big city, we're in Lima, it's gonna be noisy. However, I think I'm gonna be able to sleep anyway. If you enjoyed the video thus far, consider subscribing to the channel. Till has a lot of cool projects like this one coming up. Good morning, I just woke up. It's 4.50 in the morning. Um, no alarm or anything, I just woke up right now. It's still really dark and I'm surprised how well I slept. I think I slept really well. I, I didn't really wake up much during the night and the traffic wasn't really bothering me. Um, my, my body battery is at 94 right now out of 100 which is really good so let's look at the sleep score oh well that's <laughs> less than I thought so according to the Garmin sleep tracker I only slept 6 hours and 22 minutes and no single minute in REM sleep I knew something was off Usually the sleep tracking is a very accurate representation of how I feel and I felt way better than I was supposed to. I just finished my first coffee, still thinking about how I only slept 6 hours and 20 minutes, took up my phone again, refreshed the app and saw this. 9 hours and 19 minutes, that's the actual sleep time. And that's how I feel, I feel great, 2.5 hours of deep sleep, 2.5 hours of REM sleep and I think I can say the experiment was a full success because I've never slept more or fell asleep faster in any of my first nights in any country ever. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here is what you should check out next.